Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod. Today, we are going to be talking about the International Space Station. We're going to be talking about Starship a little bit. We're going to be talking a little bit about Starlink as well. Um, so let's first get into this International Space Station stuff. Okay, so it has something to do with SpaceX. So you're in the right place if you're a SpaceX fan. And also welcome everybody to the live chat. This is a live stream. So if you're here after the fact, make sure to pay attention. Here we go. Debs, what's up? Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome, chat. Welcome to this. We're at Studio B, by the way. We're at Starbase Studio B, about 25 minutes away from actual Starbase, SpaceX's Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. I'm here today. It's a little bit, yeah, the weather's not so good today. So I'm here in the studio, hanging out, and I'm going to be going down to Starbase later on today. Possibly a live stream from there, but I'm not quite sure about that. So I'm still trying to figure out some of the details about what happened last time and what kind of failures we had with the hardware and software. So Stay tuned for that, too. <laughs> What's up, Perpetual Nerd? Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, this is the first... This is, I think this is the first show we've done from the studio? Live one, maybe? First, one of the first, one of the first. So, anyway, we're going to get back into that kind of stuff soon. But... I want to let you guys know what's going on. First and foremost, let's talk about Starship. Because... Starship is only about 25 miles away, and a lot of the audience here love Starship. So let's get into that. Let's talk about that for a second. And I want to show you some of the road closures that are going to be happening. This is how we kind of judge things for Starship. The What kind of road closures are happening and what kind of events have happened at Starbase. So we can figure out what's going to happen at Starbase because it's crazy. It's crazy down there. Things are happening all the time. They're moving part A to part B putting things together, putting boosters together, putting ships together, and also hopefully launching a starship sometime in the spring or summer of this year. So let's take a look at these road closures real quick. Primary date, Monday was canceled. Today, canceled. Tomorrow, road closures are canceled. And usually when they do a road closure, just so everybody knows, the road closures are for SpaceX to test things at Starbase. So usually road closure means they're doing some heavy lifting of a Starship or a booster or something like that. Or they're moving something down the road or they're doing some testing, cryogenic testing, static fire, pressure testing, things like that on one of the ships. So these road closures are very important to see what's going on down at Starbase. Thursday, a closure is scheduled from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's a 12-hour road closure. Thursday, March 10th, 2022. Friday, March 11th, 2022. This is the backup date. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. All day long. Usually on Fridays, they do it from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. But for some reason, they're doing it on this Friday, March 11th, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And we have a secondary date as well, another backup date next Monday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So, yeah, Starship, Starbase, um, it's a lot happening down there. Just recently, they were moving the catch arms, and the catch arms are, I wish I had a model of these, but the catch arms are a, uh, it's a device that holds the Starship in place or holds the booster in place as they're lifting it up, stacking it onto each other, or moving it off the pad onto another transport device or another pad. And just recently, uh, they moved the chopsticks, the lift arms, up and down, opened them up, put them back down, moved them around. So we're expecting, the last time they did this, they moved a Starship with the arms. So they could just be doing some testing to see what the uh, 
you know, what the hardware and the software work together to lift the booster off the pad and onto a transport or onto another pad so they can work on stage zero, which is underneath where the booster is right now, where the booster is sitting. Um, so let me see if I have this like kind of a, this is kind of, let's check this out. So that's, that's what the booster looks like right now on the pad. So, and I don't have the catch arms handy here, but, um, they would lift this booster off. This thing's 250 feet tall. This thing is gigantic and I'm rounding to a certain number. I think it's 260 something, but it's about 250 feet tall. It's huge, nine meters in diameter. And they have these giant arms possibly on Thursday. This is what's going to happen. They're going to move this booster off the pad and onto something else. And we're not sure exactly what that thing is because they still have time to move. If they have a transport, they might move the transport into that area, move the booster somewhere. We don't know where. Could they be moving it further down the road to the production site? It's a possibility. Could they be moving ship 20 down to the production site? Possibility. Could they move it, be moving booster four off the pad just to work on the, uh, the stage zero? It's possible too. And that's the most probable outcome is that they're moving booster four off the pad so they can work on uh, the orbital pad underneath the, the uh, stage zero here. Um, Perpetual Nerd, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, uh, NC Davis, brought to you by Spellcheck, right? <laughs> and Devs, thanks for the uh, super chat as well. I appreciate all of you. It really helps out. So all these super chats, right? all these super chats help get me down to Starbase so I can film at Starbase. So every $5 I get in Super Chats, that's one trip down to Starbase and back. So this is one trip down to Starbase and back, thanks to the Super Chats from Debs, Perpetual Nerds, and NC Davis. Thank you so much for that. And the, the spell check, oh man, that spell check, just it destroyed me the other day. So we're gonna, I could talk about that for a second. I misspelled this, so look at this. Brought to you by Starship Shirts. And I'm wearing a Starship shirt, check this out. Starshipshirts.com. There you go. This is the booster uh, engine layout. It's a really comfortable shirt, by the way. But I just get a little bit off topic. But since it's live, whatever. Uh, bron I said bronk to you. I typed it wrong. Bronk to you by Starship Shirts. And I was like, somebody called me out in, uh, in the comments. And I was like, oh, what are you going to do? You know, it's so it was a copy paste thing. What are you going to do? Right. So I got called out. It was hilarious. And I, those are the things that happen. Like I've done thousands of videos and every once in a while I mess up. So that happened the other day. So let's talk about something a little bit, a little bit different here um, on the show. And let's talk about the space station. There's some stuff that happened the other day um, that uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about it a little bit. But also, we're going to find some solutions to it. Um, so let me let me get these tweets up for you. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Russia, so Russia and the U.S. and a bunch of other countries are working together on the International Space Station. It's international. Lots of nations work together, but we need parts from every nation to keep this thing above the Earth to keep it orbiting. So. Just recently, um, the Roscosmos head, so the, the person in charge of Russia's space program, Dmitry Rugazin, <laughs> I'm bad with names, everybody knows this, took to Twitter and said, if you block cooperation with us, who will save the ISS from unguided deorbit to impact on the territory of the US or Europe? Uh, there's also the chance of impact of the 500 ton construction in India or China, do you want to threaten them with such a prospect? The ISS doesn't fly over Russia, so all the risk is yours. Are you ready for it? That is a threat right there. If you block cooperation with us, who will save the ISS from an unguided deorbit? I'm going to go over this again. To impact on the territory of the US or Europe, there's also the chance of the impact of the 500 ton construction. This thing is gigantic, by the way. The ISS is huge in India or China. 
Do you want to threaten them with such a prospect? The ISS doesn't fly over Russia, so all the risk is yours. Are you ready for it? Basically saying, hey, if you cut us off, if you stop working with us, we're going to use our, they have the technology up there that keeps the ISS afloat, so to speak. Keeps it in the right orbit, boosts it up when it needs to go up, boosts it into the right position. So Elon Musk, which is, it's Elon Musk. So what are you going to say, right? You say, eh, he's going to do something funny, of course, because it's Elon Musk. And also, he's probably going to do something really cool because it's Elon Musk. And he's pretty much, uh, pretty much Iron Man. Elon said in a couple tweets uh, that there's a possibility that SpaceX could use their Dragon capsules to boost up the International Space Station if Russia pulls out. If Russia goes, okay, we're going to move all of our capsules off. We're going to move all of our people off. And it's up to you. If you want this thing to crash into the Earth, that's up to you. It could most of it'll burn up in orbit. A lot of it'll burn up in orbit, but there will might be some chunks left. So Elon just posted the SpaceX logo after this tweet, and it was ridiculous. Okay, so there's a there's a long thread, and I want to show you guys this thread because I think it's pretty important that we look at this stuff because this is um there was a whole thread on Twitter about this. Space underscore Pete had this thread, it was incredible. And there's a ton of information here that we have to go over. So I want to show you guys this thread. Uh, Pete says, here is what the ISS would look like without the uh, Russian segment attached. In its place, a dragon could be docked to provide reboost capability. You can't really see it there, but it's on the right side of your screen. There's three uh, dragons there. Uh, there's one on the right side here, one on top. And then there's one over here too, uh, a little bit further to your left, but you can't see it in that screenshot because I made it big. And then goes on to say, with Cygnus near to Dragon on the aft end of the station and two Dragons docked to the forward end, um, this would give very good altitude control capability and provide multiple reboost options. So there you go. Problem solved, right? They go into greater detail about this. An international docking adapter would need to be attached to pressurized mating adapter 1 PMA1, which is where the Russian segment is currently docked to. Pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know why they don't have the international docking adapter on there right now. That doesn't make any sense other than that, you know, Russia uses older technology, didn't want to work with it. Um, adding the IDA shouldn't be a problem as PMA, PM1, PMA1 use the same APS docking mechanism as PMA2 and 3 on the forward end of the station, which already have IDAs attached. So basically you have to just put the right attachment on there and then you can dock a dragon or Cygnus on there. Totally. Totally fine, right? Cygnus could also potentially be modified to dock rather than berth in order to provide more reboost, uh, reboost options, although it's capable of pro performing reboost from its berthing location underneath node one. It go, Pete goes on and on and on. And then this is the funny part. Uh, they should also begin a quick look study into what would be required to undock the Russian segment. In theory, it is possible. You just need to close the hatch and send the undock command in a pair of these. <laughs> a pair of, was it, wire cutters, right? Um, so yeah, they, they go into it a little bit, you know, a lot further down this, down this thread, right? And lots and lots and lots. I'm just going to scroll down here for a little bit and see how far we can go down. There's so many, it's about 30 tweets in this, and it's incredible how far they went down with this. And Elon had a tweet after this, and, uh, it, it was similar to can't find it here off the top of my head i saw it earlier but it basically said hey that was a good thread so everything that space pete wrote space underscore pete wrote elon said cool it looks like a good idea so if russia did take away all their uh parts on the space station if they wanted to de-dock undock from the space station all of their capsules uh, SpaceX could just send up more uh, cargo dragons, dock them at the ISS, and boost it up. So the threat that Russia gave to the international community of the ISS 
basically crashing into the earth can be saved relatively simply because Elon Musk has the capability and SpaceX has the capability and the capsules to do this. So if all else fails, you know, just look for the Avengers, look for Elon Musk and, uh, you know, SpaceX could take care of this. It's a really long thread. I, I want to show you this thread. I'm going to post it in chat actually, because it is absolutely amazing. If we had Starship at cost per amount, I'm going to go into some, um, I'm going to go into a little bit of uh, the chat here too, so we can get some questions. And um, NC Davis said, Putin said, we will be flying to space on broomsticks. Will Raptor 3 be renamed broomstick? You know what's funny is uh, Everyday Astronaut started selling broomsticks in his e-commerce store. I was I died. Like I saw that and I was like, are you serious? Or is he actually is he actually selling it? Let me I don't know. I saw it on Twitter. I really hope so. But it if that's true. Hold on a second. We have to figure this out. I want to see this. If this is actually a thing, I want to see if this actually works. Because so I'll give Tim a huge uh, a shout out here, see if it's actually a thing or if he just mocked it up so far. Uh, accessories, maybe. Maybe it's in accessories. You know, and I'm showing somebody else's merch just because I love the idea and it's great. Um, but yeah, I don't see it here quite yet. But he did post it on Twitter the other day. So it might be a thing in the future. It might not be available quite yet, but yeah, it might be a thing in the future, which is hilarious. Like that's, that's awesome. Right. So that's, that's pretty amazing. So we have a, we have a merch store too, starshipshirts.com. I'm going to show you this real quick. Look at that transition, man. I haven't lost a beat. Check this out. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to, I'm going to miss this beat though, because it's not going to be full screen. So this is our merch store t-shirts. You help out this, you help us out basically buy a shirt, this shirt. I'm not wearing that one. I'm wearing the, uh, the, uh, manned version of this here, but basically, yeah, if you want to help us out, we got some, we got some shirts, we got some merch, check it out. This is a shirt that I'm wearing, but. Mine is a uh, darker gray. This one's red. This is the booster engine layout. This is the booster. You see booster four at Starbase. This is the booster layout. Looks like that. You can, you know, you can wear a hat and a bracelet if you want to. And some rings and some shorts. And where, you know, you get the red one. You get the black one. Uh, I got the uh, dark gray Heather one. Looks like that. Pretty cool. I, I, it's really good. Really comfortable. Worldwide shipping, twenty five bucks, and all that money goes directly into helping out the show. So if you buy a shirt, thank you so much. And that's going to be the, that's going to be the promo for the day. All right, let's go into Starlink a little bit. Let's go to chat a little bit, actually. You know what? That's a, that's a better idea. I got to shut down Tim's site. So it looks like, you know, it looks like Elon's pretty much saved the ISS. If all else fails, you can go up there, boost up, dock with the space station, do what he needs to do and then get the space station to the right place. And, you know, he'd be contracted. Elon and uh, SpaceX would be contracted to do that work. So they'd probably make a little kickback from it, but, you know, not much, you know, it is compared to the other, uh, the other missions that they do with the ISS, uh, ferrying people from the earth to the ISS, the crew member or the crew dragon missions up there. It's going to be a small piece of it, but also they do um, they do cargo missions to the ISS, so they could dock there during the cargo missions, boost it up, and then just you know keep it there. So very cool, very cool that that's happening. Now let's talk about there's another thing that's happening too, and this is a kind of a Starship thing, but also a Starlink thing. So let's transition to a little bit of Starbase Starship stuff. There was a possible um, piece of a cargo nose. I believe it was a nose of Starship. Um, oh, it's a blue and yellow broomstick shirt. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> a blue background with yellow Raptor layout would be sick. Oh, cool. 
That, that's cool. Do you have any shirts with pockets? Oh, like a pocket t-shirt? Not yet. We could get them though, Perpetual Nerd. I really do like pocket shirts and we're gonna, we'll get those in the future for sure. We can do any sort of shirt. So, um, so we saw pieces of a possible cargo starship at Starbase just recently. And which means either they're going to be working on a moon variant of a starship or the uh, Polaris mission, which is going to be a, a human rated starship. So they could be doing tests for that. They could also be doing tests for a Starlink starship, cargo starship. We're not exactly sure how they're going to Tetris all those Starlink satellites in there, but it's going to be a wild kind of uh, uh, configuration that they put in there because they can put hundreds of these things in there at the same time. This thing is gigantic. So let's talk a little bit about Starlink and what happened as well with with uh, the Russian government with Starlink too, because I think this is an important thing to talk about too at this point, because uh, we have you know global events going on, but we also have the technology to get information to people that need it. Elon Musk tweeted, Starlink has been told by some governments, not Ukraine, to block Russian news sources. We will not do so unless at gunpoint. Sorry to be a free speech absolutist. So Starlink has been told by some governments to block Russian news sources. Starlink's basically an ISP. And this is what I'm going to just talk about this for a second. Starlink is basically an ISP. They don't want to, you know, he's a free speech absolutist, right? Doesn't want to block it. I agree with him. Don't block information. If it's harmful information, it'll get sorted out. But it's not Elon Musk and SpaceX's uh, uh, place to say what's right and wrong. You know, they just provide the lines that the information goes over, basically, the airwaves that it goes over, and they're not responsible for that. Elon says the same thing. So he goes forward and says this too about Starlink. SpaceX reprioritized to cyber defense and overcoming signal jamming. We'll call slight delays in Starship and Starlink version two. So slight delays, they have to probably put people from different parts of SpaceX out of those teams, like for a short amount of time, slight delays in a Starship and Starlink version two. So hardening the defense of Starlink, very important too. It's very important for, for all communications to be encrypted and hardened and have the cyber defense so there's no signal jamming of Starlink. I think it's super important to do this. And of course, uh, S. Padre, are Starlink satellites being jammed? Elon said some Starlink terminals near conflict areas were being jammed for several hours at a time. A latest software update bypasses the jam. I'm curious to see what's next. Typical curious engineer. <laughs> He's like, these people are messing with our with our hardware, messing with our software. They're jamming us up. But he's like, I'm, cur I'm curious to see what's going on. You know, what are they gonna, what are they gonna pull next? And this is a game of cat and mouse. You know, it's always like hackers try a thing, people will fix that hack, and then hackers will try another thing, people will fix that hack. Except it goes on and on and on. It's in video games. It's on the internet. It's everywhere, all the time. There's hackers all over the place, and these are these people are jamming Starlink satellites or the, uh, the Starlink hardware, the terminals near the conflict areas. And Elon just says, well, bring it on. What's next? I'm curious. I want to see what's happening. And here's another tweet that's going on too. In a way, this is free QA. Ha ha. What? Somebody that's <laughs> in charge of a multi-billion dollar company, SpaceX, he's like, well, if they keep trying to hack us, we're just going to, we're just going to get better. And this is even better for us because we'll have a more solid product in the future because this is quality control that they're giving us for free. What is happening? <laughs> like, the, no, he's not a he's not a, a, a typical corporate CEO. He's just he's an engineer at heart. He just wants to see what's going to happen next. And he says, hey, this is our Q&A. This is our QA, like quality control. Come on. Bring it on, see what they do next. So 
we'll see what they do next. And hopefully Elon and SpaceX will be able to figure out what they do next and, uh, you know, get to uh, get to a better spot in the future. And let's talk about Starlink a little bit more right after we go into some some uh, chat here. Uh, Space News Pod, wouldn't it be better for Elon to not publicly announce that Russian taxes aren't working anymore? Probably, yeah. It would make sense to do that, right? It would make sense to not say the things that are working for them. You know, if he's saying, hey, SpaceX, uh, Starlink, SpaceX and Starlink is getting jammed, we're going to fix it. I mean, it's also good to tell them, like, hey, we beat you. But also, you know, like, it's like, hey, we, we got you. You know, we got you. You didn't get us. We got you. I guess that's right. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about that stuff, about the whole tactics and stuff, but it would make sense. Um, it would make sense if he were to say, hey, it's not working anymore. But then they might try harder. And then he gets more QA out of it. He gets more quality control. So they get to talk about that stuff too. <laughs> Free. Yeah. Problems make us stronger. Exactly. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. Do things that are hard, you know? And it's like, yeah, do the thing, do the things that scare you and do the things that are difficult. And I know like from Elon, Elon and his perspective, he always wants to do the hardest things, you know? Um, so if these hackers are trying to take down Starlink terminals, there's a reason why, you know, they're, uh, Elon is fighting back, and that's because they know that SpaceX can do it, and he's putting his engineers to the hardest test, which is to beat these real-time hackers as they're – I'm just calling it hackers as a blank term. I'm not sure if that's the proper term. I'm not in that industry, but these people that are jamming the signals – uh, giving them free testing, basically. So very cool, though, that Elon is just saying, all right, well, bring it on. We're going to fix it. And then you can't do anything about it, suckers. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the quality assurance. Exactly, Stephen. Exactly. So moving on from there, uh, we do have a Starlink launch coming up, too. That's coming up in the next, uh, what is it, tomorrow? Yeah, Starlink launch. Upcoming launch, March 9th, uh, 48 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit from Space Launch Complex 40, SLC 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Instantaneous launch window is at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow morning. Um, first booster supported um, previous launch of Arabsat 6A, STP-2, Cosmo SkyMed second generation FM-2, Following stage separation of Falcon 9's first stage will return to Earth and land on a short fall of Gravitas drone ship, which will be stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. And they'll have a webcast up about 15 minutes before this launch. Starlink launches are, I mean, I don't know what you guys think about these things. Um, I'm, I'm content. That's a good word for it. I'm very content. Because... I like that these Starlink launches just work. Like every time they do it, every time they do it, it seems like it's child's play. It goes off without a hitch. Super smart people are behind the scenes working on this stuff, of course. But it seems like every time they do it, they hit it perfect, or at least close to perfect. So, I mean, I watch them on my own. I watch the Starlink launches. I watch everything. A Game of Spy versus Spy, Michael Maxey, yes. I watch these launches uh, every time, and I think they're great. Every single time, I think they're great. Now, is it getting too easy for SpaceX? No, because they're building on the knowledge that they had from the past into their future launches, into Starship launches as well, and that'll be really important for future SpaceX operations because, man, is Starlink in Starship, hundreds of Starlink satellites, more than what they already launch? Crazy. Crazy how big this thing is going to be in the future, because it's going to be all over the world. I mean, right now it's in a, it's in a huge population of the, of the Earth, but everybody on Earth could possibly get Starlink satellite internet eventually, if their governments are okay with it. And that's a... That's, billions of dollars for SpaceX. 
in those billions of dollars will fund more Starlink, better Starlink in the future, and also starships in the future, because it's all it's all a game right now, right? So you have to do these little side projects to make money to build the big things, right? Starship in the future probably won't pay for Starship right away. Starship in the future is going to pay for Starlink launches. And those Starlink launches will bring in billions of dollars for SpaceX because that's kind of like their iPhone, right? So Apple Apple has computers, you know, they have they have MacBooks which drive a bunch of, you know, a bunch of money that way. They have their desktops, they have their monitors, they have some headphones, things like that. But the thing is, the iPhone is the thing that makes them the most money. And Starlink is like SpaceX's iPhone. They have all these other things going on too, right? So SpaceX has uh, Falcon 9, Block 5, they have the Crew Dragon, they have, um, you know, the crew missions, they have the NASA missions, Department of Defense missions, Department of Defense missions make a bunch of money. But Starlink in the future will be a continuous revenue stream because that's what they need to keep building starships. So Starlink, that's what they're doing all the time. It's going to be great. Like in the next 20 years, it's not going to be the same Earth. Like we're going to be living in some weird cyber future in the next 20 years. It's going to be incredible. I'm so happy to be part of this. Like I really am. I'm down here at Starbase almost every day, and I get to see these gigantic rockets being built, and I'm somehow a part of this. You know, like uh, by by sheer force of will, like I'm part of this basically, and you know, I'm I I made it happen. You know, I got to get I I got down here because of sheer force of will. Also, the help from so many so many really nice people that have helped me out on this journey. So, like I couldn't do it without anybody. You know, I couldn't have done it by myself. That's for sure. I would have tried my damnedest to do it, but I couldn't have done it without everybody else. But it's like you got to just keep doing it. So that's what SpaceX is doing with the Starlink stuff. They're just pushing on and on and on and on. And then they're going to get to the point where this is going to make them billions and billions and billions of dollars to keep building starships. And it's so cool. I'm, I'm so pumped about it. Like you guys don't even understand how cool it is to go, go to Starbase almost every day. Oh man. Um, Earth Starlink paved the way to lunar and Martian Starlinks and beyond Marina. Yeah. I, a hundred percent agree with you. All this stuff, all these little side projects that Elon has, Tesla, Starlink, uh, Boring Company, Starship, all that stuff, I even Falcon 9, you know, and Crew Dragon, that's all so people can get to Mars. It's all part of it. And learning the technologies from one part and doing it to the next thing, a hundred percent just to get people to Mars. So cool. I'm so, so excited about the future. Um, it's going to be really cool. Uh, Matthew says, I would love to know how much SpaceX have spent on Starship development, including ports, Boca Chica, Star or Stage Zero, etc. <sighs> yeah, me too. I really would. I, there's estimates out there, but I don't think anyone even knows how close it is or how close they can come to the actual price of that. Um, Elon wants to get the price down to a million dollars per launch. But they've had to spend, I think they've spent $5 billion. I think Elon said $5 billion so far on production and development. I think it was $5 billion. But all the other stuff around it, too, you know, it could be other things. Like, they probably pay for some of the, the road paving. They probably donate for that kind of stuff. They probably, you know, there's probably all this other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And when he said $5 billion for development so far, I was like, that's it? Because the SLS, that's it's up to fifty billion per launch. Something like that. I think yeah, something like that. Forty seven billion per launch for the SLS. And there's like four launches planned. And Elon's like, Oh yeah, we've are, we've only spent five billion, but we have a rocket that's almost ready. So I I wanna find the article. I think I might have it somewhere. Let me check. I think I have it in another tab. Give me one second. This is all live, so there we go. Uh, it's an article from CNBC. I don't want to post it on screen, but I'll read it to you. 
Star Starship is fully reusable rocket with SpaceX is developing with the goal of creating a vehicle that can carry cargo and people to the moon and Mars. Uh, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk recently estimated the Starship's development costs would be 5% to 10% of Apollo era Saturn V rocket, which at an inflation adjusted $50 billion put Starship's development cost at $2.5 billion to $5 billion. So that kind of answers your question. I mean, Elon said five-ish billion. So I know I just read that yesterday. So I'm glad you uh, glad you brought it up. Um, imagine star bases on the moon and Mars, Marina. Yeah, I think that would be amazing. By the way, that was Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Not sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts, but they're the best coffee ever. Prove me wrong. NASA's internal governance ripped SLS apart. Yeah, Boeing was a part of that too. You know, they, they let Boeing do a lot of things that Boeing probably shouldn't have done. Boeing didn't deliver properly, and now the taxpayers are paying for it. So it's a lot of money, man, for these for these uh, rockets that uh, they could have just paid SpaceX to build, basically. Uh, with Starship, do you think SLS will be too obsolete, Pixelbox says? Um... I would not say it's going to be obsolete. I think it's important to have numerous providers for launches. Because if something were to happen, so let's say if, you know, if SpaceX has two rockets, say if they just have, they only have two starships right now. And NASA was like, okay, we need this stuff to go to the moon by the end of the month because we need to support our astronauts there. If SpaceX finds an issue with one of their pumps in the in one of the starships before the flight and this pump isn't fixed for six months it would be a great idea to have an sls rocket ready to go whenever that needs to be done as a backup spacex would probably have more than two starships at any given time though but they may do sort of a recall like when they do on your car say if you know your car horn is broken or something. In every model of that car, they do a recall, they test everything out, they make sure everything works. SpaceX may do something similar to that, and then the SLS could step in and do the work for them, or vice versa. You know, if something happens with SLS, it's always good to have a backup for these things. So it's always good to have two providers, but I also think SLS is bloated. You know, the Artemis program is an amazing idea. And I commend everybody in that program for doing what they've done to make this happen. But it's also so much money. And it's also a jobs program. Just like, you know, there were there were so many people that were saying that uh, the Apollo program was basically a jobs program. Because it did. It, uh, tens of thousands of people were, were employed by the government to make all those rockets. So it to make the capsules and, like, people were baking, like, they're making, like, you know, screws and bolts and nuts, you know, like everything, everything was due to, uh, you know, uh, the Apollo era jobs program, as some people put it, but it works, you know, it worked. We got to the moon, everything worked fine, but they shut it down because they were like, this is a lot of money and nobody cares. And I'm like, nobody cares. What, <laughs> what are you thinking? I was like, you only did a few flights, buddy. <laughs> But it, it is, it's a pathfinder, you know, like we, we have to have those things in order for something like Starship to come along because without Apollo program, Starship wouldn't have been a thing because it inspired so many people to do great things, including myself, you know, to, to make leaps of faith and to do things that you wouldn't normally do because that's what astronauts did. And of course I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid, just like everybody else in that era. So Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think Starship's going to make SLS uh, obsolete though. Uh, uh, what do you think of the idea to give Starliner to SpaceX to make it work? Oh, Marina, that is, oh, don't do it. I mean, they could probably fix it. Uh, like their engineers could probably fix it, no doubt. But I would rather them not. I, it's like, t it's a tainted piece of equipment. Don't put it in SpaceX's hands. I think SpaceX's uh, the responsibility should only be with their own hardware and their own software. But I think it'd be funny. 
Uh, there's so much to reflect on during this great Space News Pod live stream. Thanks, uh, Jajka. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. Uh, Jacques. I'm going to say Jacques. I don't know if the J, the second J is silent, but Jacques. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. My, Everybody has weird names on the internet that I can't pronounce. And then they're not weird names. I just can't pronounce them. So I find it, I just like, like, to, like to make fun of myself. Um, SLS is an important tool for space exploration by reminding people constantly of how expensive things can be if you let Congress pork spend for their districts. Oh, yeah. That's kind of how it is, right? That's how kind of how it is. There's there's programs like Starship and there's programs like Falcon 9 and things like that that you have so much, so much less money than the SLS, but they also employ thousands of people, give people really great paychecks, like really, really great paychecks. But then you have something like the government that's trying to do the same thing. And then there's so much other spending that goes into it because they, you know, they have providers like Boeing or other, uh, you know, old space, old space companies that are charging them an arm and leg for something that somebody else just swoops in like SpaceX did swoops in, gives them a better product for less money. So think about that. SpaceX does a better product for less money. And of course you're going to buy it. Like there's no reason not to, but without NASA, and without those programs, SpaceX wouldn't be a thing. So I have to reiterate that SpaceX wouldn't be where it is now without the same organizations that spend money on the old space companies. And they took a leap of faith with SpaceX. So, um, you know, they they showed that their rocket, the the first Falcon, could do what it needed to do. And then space or NASA was like, all right, buddy. Here you go. Here's some money. Here's a, here's a bunch of money so you can continue working on this thing. So that was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Sorry, they are initials. Oh, J-O-J-K. Oh, okay. Yeah, tag names are hard. Um, <laughs> Jock was respectfully funny. <laughs> I'll get the U.S. ever trust the Russians again. Ellen, um, in time, I think it'll happen. And like, I'm just a, I'm just a guy. So I don't know anything about politics. I, I know the same thing as everybody else. I'm not a politician. I'm not deeply entrenched in that stuff, but I think it's just going to take time and, you know, time heals all wounds in one way or another. And hopefully, you know, you get people in power that aren't, uh, that are with all, you know, all nations, we get people in power that are peaceful, nice people that are going to do the right thing. Um, NASA nurtured SpaceX was absolutely right. Thinking now NASA needs SpaceX like never before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They need SpaceX. Uh, they nurtured them to the place where they are now. And now SpaceX is sending people, like just regular people, into orbit. You know, with the Inspiration4 mission and the Polaris missions. Polaris will be the first Starship mission too. So that's crazy that people are already buying seats on a Starship. Who's going to go on the first Starship mission, too? We should talk about that in another episode. I think that would be fun. Let's to go over a list of candidates of who could be a really good candidate for a Starship mission, for the first Polaris Starship mission. That'd be a cool one. Um, yeah, so uh, we're running out of time here. I have a couple minutes left. So uh, I just want to say thanks before I go to everybody here in the chat. And thanks to everybody who's supported the chat today. Uh, Matthew, thank you for the super chat. We got, um, we got how many trips to Star uh, Starbase today? We got three trips, almost three trips to Star Starbase today. Uh, thanks, Debs. Thanks, Perpetual Nerd and NC Davis, of course, for the super chats. If you want to help out the show, super chat is the best way to do it. Look at the bottom of your chat. There's a there's a money sign at the bottom. Click that, tap that, and help out the show because that'll give you more content, more live shows. More shows from Starbase. That's the important part, shows from Starbase. And also make sure to like the video if you can. And also subscribe to the show because we'll be doing more of these in-studio things like this and also at Starbase in the future. So if you want to become a member of the show too, that helps. Uh, you can become part of the crew and that'll help us out on a monthly basis. It's a couple bucks 
I think it's five bucks to do it. And that's one trip to Starbase. And you're going to help fund this channel and fund more content. We have three years into this business, three years into Starship and three years into uh, YouTube. So we're here for the long haul. We're going to do it until we can't do it anymore. So uh, thank you to everybody who has helped us continue doing this because without you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this. So um, thank you for all of your support. And I want to uh, take you out with, I don't have an ending screen. You know what, Debs, I know you're, you're probably still here, Debs, but I do have an ending screen. And it, we used to do this all the time in the live show. The ending screen was like the worst. <laughs> guess I could I never got a good one but now I have an even worse one so stream ending here we go that's even worse that's like the worst stream ending screen you could ever get <laughs> it's amazing so thank you everybody I love you all take care of yourselves and each other and I will see you next time on the space news pod also we have a twitch channel so twitch.tv slash space news, but also uh, TikTok. Go follow us on TikTok. TikTok is space news pod, one word. So we want to get this, the uh, TikTok up and boosted. So TikTok is space news pod, all one word. Please go follow us over there. We do short form Starship content over there. Thank you, everybody. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye.